What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hacks. My name is Travis. In this video, I'm going to share with you my top five tips that will aid in your success while quarantining fish. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, number five, isolating multiple fish. Now there are a couple reasons why you would want to do this. Uh, the first one is aggression. Uh, usually when it comes to tangs or clowns, they seem to be the most aggressive fish uh, when it comes to quarantine. They're already stressed out during the transport and their journey. And when you go ahead and plop them all together in one tank, uh, even if they're just tangs in one tank or just clowns in one tank, they tend to pick on each other. And with them already being stressed out, uh, usually they get hurt or sick or die uh, simply simply of just stress. So that's something that uh, you want to take in consideration. If you're getting in multiple tanks, like for example, I have three tanks that will be going into the 300 at the end of the month. Uh, one of them is isolated because he's known to be pretty aggressive and the other two are pretty docile. So they are up in the top tank there uh, with each other. Now, for example, uh, say one of those tanks, say the, uh, the uh, Scopus tank became a jerk and started beating up the flame fin. I would go ahead and remove that Scopus tank and then put him in a separate quarantine tank, one of the other five that are open here on the rack system, and then continue my quarantine process with him. Now, if a fish is really aggressive during quarantine, you might want to reconsider putting them in your tank depending on the size. If you have a 300, 500, 600 gallon tank, if they're aggressive to each other in a 20 gallon, I highly doubt they're even going to notice each other in that bigger tank. So just take that into consideration. All right, the next reason why you would want to isolate multiple fish is to prevent the spread of disease and parasites. Now, it is a lot easier to have one big tank with a bunch of fish in it. It's definitely easier for on your wallet as well as for, uh, you know, dosing copper and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing you have to remember is not every fish is sick when they come in. Uh, some are, some aren't. And uh, unfortunately, if you put them all together, they're all going to get sick if one is. Now, the thing is that uh, that one fish that is not sick might just be on the edge of, you know, too stressed out, uh, you know, might make it, might not make it. And if it gets, say, ick and it's already really stressed out and not doing well from the uh, the transport or wherever it came from that might be the one last thing that would take it over the edge and kill it off so by isolating fish or spreading them out through multiple tanks you can uh, fix an issue keep it in one tank and prevent other fish from getting it and potentially having them die so those are my two reasons for why you should always isolate multiple fish all right number four how you decide to acclimate your fish will determine how successful they are during quarantine now, the method I'm about to tell you is not my own. It's something that I read in an article about a year ago, and I could not find it to save my life. I've looked all over over the last week. I cannot find it. So if you know who wrote this article, who brought this to the hobby, please let me know so I can link it in the description below, and I will continue to look myself uh, so I can give the, the author the proper credit that they deserve. Now, when it comes to acclimating fish, there are two different scenarios here. There's the one where you get the fish locally, so it's only in the bag for about an hour or two at most, or it's in a container, so it never really has time to kind of go to the bathroom in the water and have issues with that. Now, the second one is when you order fish online, those fish are usually in the bag for about 24 hours or so before you get them, which during that time they were, you know, going to the bathroom in the water producing the ammonia. Now, the difference that I have found and which was met mentioned in this method is when I get fish in, uh, most of them have been in the bag overnight. So those are usually the majority of the fish I get. When they come in, instead of usually uh, pouring that fish into a bucket and then just drip acclimating them from the quarantine tank for pH, salinity, and temperature, I just go ahead and I, I simply float the bag for about an hour, getting the bag up to temperature. And then I go ahead and I open the bag up and then immediately uh, strain or pour the bag into a net, allowing the fish to be caught up in the water to go down into a bucket and then simply putting that fish into the tank now the reason behind this as mentioned in the article there is is basically what happens as soon as that bag is exposed to air all that ammonia over the last 24 hours uh, starts to become very toxic and burns the gills of the fish and what this does is it's something that doesn't really show up right away it's usually about a week or two into quarantine the fish will be up at the water surface gasping for air and then will die with no external parasites as they might be eating and all that stuff but they'll just simply die because their gills were destroyed or really damaged during uh, the acclimation process when you when you thought you were kind of dripping and all that stuff for temperature and pH, you are actually burning the gills because the ammonia became toxic once it was exposed to oxygen. Now, you have to, and some people might say that might be too stressful to simply uh, plop the fish into a tank with just the proper temperature, but not the pH and the salinity. Well, you have to pick the lesser of evils here. Would you rather have the fish be burned from the inside out, or would you rather them have a little, be a little uncomfortable for a little bit when it came to uh, salinity and pH? I would personally choose the other two of foes to them uh, actually being kind of burnt alive there uh, with the ammonia spike. So uh, that that is the one thing that I have changed early on. And again, I went from about 40 to 50% death rate down to about 10% just by making that little switch. 
Now, on the other side of things, if you're getting fish locally here, you can go ahead and if they've only been in the bag for about an hour or so, you can go ahead and simply pour the contents of that bag in a barrel and then drip acclimate as normal. Or you can just still go the route that I went. Either way, it will work uh, if the fish has only been in the bag for a couple hours. So that's my tip for acclimating fish. All right, number three, I always keep a half dose of copper in all of my quarantine tanks 24 hours a day. Now, there's a couple reasons behind this. The first one is when fish die in quarantine, usually the parasites that are internal or external will leave the body of the fish and look for a new host. Now, if a fish dies in there and you have other fish, or maybe you want to add more fish to a quarantine tank uh, you know, in a couple weeks because it's empty, you want that copper to be in the system there to attack the parasites and kill them while they're free swimming. That way it doesn't go on another fish and that the tank is ready to go for your next batch of fish. The other reason is, is when I have uh, fish come in like tangs and stuff, they're very susceptible to ick. It's just kind of how they are. And uh, with them coming right in and going directly into a half a dose of copper, uh, if the ick parasite falls off, it usually gets caught up in the water column early on, and the, the uh, uh, copper will take care of that parasite really, really quickly. Now, uh, what I usually do is I usually wait 48 hours or longer, depending on if the fish is eaten or not. But if the fish is eating and it's been about 48 hours, I'll go ahead and do the second dose of copper, getting them up to their uh, normal range of what it should be in that tank. Now, what I usually do is let that run for about two weeks, and then I'll go ahead and do a series of water changes, maybe like 20 or 30% bringing the copper level down slightly into the tank, uh, lessening the stress of the copper on the fish, but also keeping enough of it in the water column to continue to fight off any parasites that might actually start free swimming. So that's my deal with copper. I've been very successful with it, and you guys should definitely try it out. All right, number two, utilizing probiotics and other medications as well as high-quality food to aid your fish during the quarantine period. Now, you guys know that I like to use a probiotic from Precision Aquarium. And I've been using this pro probiotic for a long time, and I feel that it does help. Um, I've gone both ways. I've used it, and I haven't used it and been successful either way. I feel that uh, between that, Prazi Pro and the Coopermine, those are my three main uh, medications, and I seem to take care of everything. Um, I've never actually had to use any other medications uh, to solve any issues. Those three seem to be taking care of everything. So uh, there might be a parasite or something I run into down the road that I'll have to adjust my medications, but fingers crossed I haven't ran into that issue yet. Now, I like to go ahead and dose this stuff as soon as I get fish in as a preventative measure. It's better to catch the issue early on before it takes hold of the fish or the fish starts showing uh, signs of illness. It's always good to have this stuff in there. And uh, yeah, I really do like it. I only dose it once during a quarantine period. And then when I do water changes, I don't bother redosing it. I just keep it as is. Now, uh, moving on to fish food. You guys know that I make my own fish food. It has like 50 some odd ingredients in it. And uh, I feed it every other day because it's so nutrient dense. It will uh, dirty up a quarantine tank really quickly and cause ammonia issues. So uh, feeding the fish every other day just enough that they'll eat and then removing the rest and also siphoning out any food that gets to the bottom of the tank before it has a chance to break down is always a good idea. But having a high quality food, uh, which mine has Reef Plus in it, which has got amino acids and multivitamins, all sorts of stuff in the uh, Reef Plus, which is mixed into the food, which has uh, 50 some on ingredients. So it's a very nutrient dense food and the fish take to it uh, pretty quickly. So that's my tip regarding uh, probiotics and fish food. All right, moving on to my number one tip here, start your quarantine period over as soon as you see the last sign of illness. Now, I know that's a really hard concept to take in, and it, it sucks. Trust me, I, I know. Uh, when it came to my blue hippo tang, she was in quarantine for 13 weeks before I finally could get the parasite to go away. It was just a nightmare with her. I, it was it was awful. Even with copper, it just seemed like the parasite would not go away. Then I did hyposalinity, and it finally went away. Had to bring her up out of hyposalinity, and as soon as I saw the parasite was gone, that's when I started the four-week quarantine period over again, and then she went through the four weeks, and it was good to go. Um, sometimes you start the quarantine period over, and then two weeks later, another parasite or something pops up, and then you have to address that and then continue the process, and uh, yes, it does suck, but it's important that if, if you catch a parasite in time to save the fish and then you treat that parasite, you have to observe that time all over again. You just have to do it. And um, again, I know it sucks, but you just need to do it to be successful. It's kind of how it is. There's a lot of people that debate me all the time saying, hey, I don't quarantine my fish and I've been very successful. Basically, you've been playing Russian roulette and you haven't gotten to the bullet yet. That's basically what you've, you're telling me. There's no scientific proof behind what you're saying, your method that proves that what you're doing is the best way to go. So eventually you're going to swing around, you're going to hit that bullet, and then you're going to crash your tank or you're going to have some serious issues because you chose not to quarantine. So uh, just take these tips, guys. I hope they aid you in your success. If you have any questions or have anything to add to this list, please put it in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until the next video, I'll see you later. Peace.